Hello, my friend. This is a joyous video. <laughs> this is a video a long, long, long time in the making. We have made it, my friends, to 300,000 members of the collective brain of makeup awesomeness. Yay! <laughs> Y'all, I'm so freaking excited because this has been a journey. This has taken some time. And it's funny because a couple of days ago, I got a comment from somebody and they were like, how long are you going to be at 299,000 subscribers? Like, when is it going to go over 300,000? Because it was literally like maybe, I don't know, it was a while that I was at 299. My channel grows very, 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 very slowly. <laughs> I am just thankful that you are choosing to be here to watch my videos. We only have so many hours conscious in our days and we have to choose what we want to do with those things wisely. And the fact that you choose to be here instead of all of the other things you could be choosing to do is a great honor for me. And the 300,000 people have currently chosen to be a part of this community. It just really touches my heart and I don't take it lightly at all. And what I recognize is that some of you have been here for many, many years. Some of you have been here for a couple of years. Some of you may have just found me through my Lisa Frank video. <laughs> it just went up a couple of weeks ago that a lot of you came to find me through, which is, which is wonderful. But what newer people might not know is how this channel came to be and what this channel has been over the years because it has gone through many different changes. And I think you'll find the journey fun. You're gonna recognize some faces that are in my story that you may not have realized are part of my story and the story of this channel. So what I wanted to do today in celebration of 300,000 of you choosing to be subscribed to this channel, I wanted to kind of take you down memory lane and start talking about kind of the origin story of this channel. How did this channel get started? What was the evolution of the content on this channel? Who did I meet along the way? And those of you that have been around for a long time, this may just be a memory lane for you as well. And if you're new, it's great to know who you're subscribed to and what has happened before you got here so you know the context of what you're watching now. So if you are interested in taking that journey with me back in time, hang tight. We're about to get into it right now. Where we need to start this video is when I decided I wanted to start this channel. And at that time, I was very, very sad. Uh, I was lost. It was April of 2012 and I was not working. I was on a year maternity leave from having my son. Uh, my son, his, his name is John, but his nickname is J4 because his dad is J3, John the third. So when I say J4, that's my son. So he was a baby and babies are very cute. I love my son so much. He wasn't a super hard baby, but still being a parent to a baby is difficult. And I was spending my days by myself taking care of a baby where I had been used to being in a school. I was an elementary school teacher. I was a special education teacher specifically. I did pop in and out of being a fourth grade classroom teacher, but I was primarily a special education teacher. So I was used to having a very busy schedule, seeing lots of people, interacting with lots of people, going to meetings, having coworkers, to then being home by myself with a baby all day. And then I would go pick up Phoenix from preschool. I would bring them home. I would make dinner. My husband would come home from working at his tattoo studio that he owned. And we would go through our evening routine. And that was kind of it. That was kind of my life. I didn't really have any friends anymore. And the reason why was because when I was bored and needing connection, my friends were working and I had nobody other than those evenings with my family and I was lonely and I was sad. So what I would do when my baby was napping is I would turn on YouTube and I would watch different creators. One of my favorite escapes was learning about makeup because before I found beauty YouTube, I just basically knew the basics about makeup. You know, you take one, maybe two eyeshadows, a little bit of mascara, a little bit of pencil liners, a little bit of blush, a little bit of lip gloss or lipstick. I mean, my, my knowledge of makeup was extremely, extremely minimal. One of my husband's friends actually introduced me to Laura Mercier and I'd never even heard of Laura Mercier. And John went to the store and he got me 
me a single shadow and um, a couple of other little things. But I remember the single shadow was like nothing I had ever used as far as eyeshadow before. And I was blown away that it was so easy to use. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. And that really made me want to look more into beauty YouTube. And my favorite YouTuber at the time uh, was someone who ran a channel called Makeup Geek TV. And you may know her as Marlene Estelle, uh, was my absolute favorite. I also had another favorite, which was a channel called X Spark It. Creator of that channel, her name was Leisha. I didn't know that at the time, but Leisha was also a big inspiration for me. And it was almost like sitting with girlfriends because at the time I didn't have any. So, sorry. The thing about me is sometimes I just spontaneously cry, which was really inappropriate in the workplace. <laughs> But not quite as inappropriate here, but it just meant a lot to me because I felt like they were my friends almost because I didn't have any friends. And the beauty space was really special because they were teaching me something and they were really nice people and they knew something that I didn't and I was learning and I was having fun. So I started going out and buying a little bit of makeup. I got my first uh, Coastal Sense 88 palette because of Leisha. Uh, and I also got, you know, a couple of other things. I remember getting my first Kat Von D palette when Kat Von D Beauty first launched. Of course, I didn't know at the time, you know, much about Kat Von D, but my husband was a tattoo artist, so I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so I, you know, got a little makeup bag, a little collection, and I realized that I wanted to go back to doing YouTube because I actually had a YouTube channel before. It was called Gen Love 37 and when I started that, I, we didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> All we were given was the instructions of broadcast yourself. We didn't really know what what we were doing at all so you know it was kind of a mishmash of different things different ideas you know watching a video responding along with pretty much everybody else on YouTube I have been tagged. The Mighty Thor has tagged me. So you shall now learn five things about me. First thing I'm going to share with you is I was a huge dork in high school. Number two. Number two thing about me. Number two is that I have no sense of direction. I This is totally true, 100% true. I once got lost in a Walmart parking lot. Next thing is that, believe it or not, I cross stitch. I can cross stitch. And let me show you what I'm working on. And this is what I'm making for the baby. Oh, isn't it cute? Speaking of babies, my number four thing, number four, is that I was very, very ugly when I was born. This is the last thing and the most embarrassing thing. All right? When I was in elementary school, we were having like a like an assembly thing where they had two classrooms together and we had like these big walls that were between our classrooms that you could pull to the side so you could join the two rooms together. And there was a woman talking in the middle and presenting her little thing and I had to fart really bad, okay? Like really bad. And I hadn't quite figured out how to like control my farts. I just knew I needed to fart. So I farted, right? Really, really loud. And this is how I decided to hide it. I raised my hand like this and I said, I didn't do it! And I've always... <laughs> I never said I was the brightest person ever. I never did. Love you guys. Mad love. Mwah. Um, just things I was thinking at the time about what was going on in the world or or just little silly skits. Hi. It's Faith again. I was at a show the other night and I was like cramped in with all these people. And that was this girl with a metal lunchbox. And she insisted on standing right next to me. I'm standing there with this lunchbox digging into my leg. I started to get, like, kind of pissed. Because it hurt. So I wrote her a song. Metal lunchbox girl, I hope that you get a drumstick and it hits you in your face and it hurts really bad. Metal lunchbox girl, I hope they throw a CD and it hits you in the head and gives you a big scar on your forehead. Metal lunchbox girl. I hope that someone that's crowd surfing kicks you in the nose and then someone that's moshing steps on your toes. 
Metal lunchbox girl. Yeah, don't do that. It's not cool. I did a pregnancy vlog for Phoenix when I was pregnant with Phoenix where I went through the whole thing of being pregnant and what that was like all the way to bringing the camera to the hospital with me and me being in the bed uh, about to have a baby and you know taking Phoenix home for the first time uh, that was on my original channel but uploading on that channel was very sporadic it was never something that I uploaded on regularly it was more of a fun little side thing and I kind of given it up because I didn't really know what to do with it I knew I needed to have some kind of niche so I started just like uploading videos of Phoenix, you know, doing cute little things. Up above the floor so high. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, no. Bow, 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 bow. This, this is. No. You gonna finish your song? No. You all done with your song? No. I'm, I'm, I still sing it. Okay. I started trying to turn it into a parenting like education channel where I would help parents know how to teach their struggling readers uh, different phonics tricks stuff like that. Hello everyone welcome back to my series on teaching your child reading strategies. This is good for um, toddlers, preschoolers, kindergartners, or any kid that is struggling with learning how to read. And it just, it wasn't really bringing me joy, so I kind of abandoned it. So as I started getting more and more into watching these beauty videos, I decided to start a brand new channel, and that's how Jen Loves Reviews was born. Uh, April 25th of 2012 was when I uploaded my entire makeup collection that fit into one small cosmetic bag. Hi! How are you guys doing? How's, hopefully everybody's doing well. There he is. Say hi, baby John. Say hi. I have recently become obsessed with makeup, and I've watched a lot of makeup videos on YouTube. My first obsession for makeup videos was Makeup Geek. Long, 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 long time ago. I found out recently that there are a gazillion people talking about makeup on YouTube, and I thought I would join the ranks. Here are some of my go-to stuff. I have this Sephora. Artist lipstick palette that I got a while back. I only use like two colors of it. Yep. This is actually my favorite eyeshadow. Kat Von D's. Believe it or not. I didn't think that I would like it as much as I do, but I do. The black is completely gone. I broke it. Um, I was using it for eyeliner and I broke it. Alright, next up I have my Z palette that I got. This is all Makeup Geek eyeshadow. Next up inside, I have my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. Make sure that to focus, see if it'll focus on it. My next jumbo eye pencil and milk. But the issue with starting a makeup channel when you were on maternity leave, at least in the US, is that I wasn't getting paid. <laughs> you only get paid in the US, I think it's either six or eight weeks, I can't remember, after the baby's born, but then after that, it's completely unpaid. Really, maternity leave is just a guarantee that you'll have a job when you decide to go back and you can take off one year or two years. So I didn't have a lot of money. So I was sitting there thinking, you know, what am I gonna do to do this channel? I obviously can't do makeup like all these these other beauty gurus that I was watching, you know, Marlena and Leisha, like they're freaking, I can't do that. I'm just learning. So what could I do? And my big issue at the time was I didn't have money. So I wanted to try to help people like me who also didn't have money, but wanted to try makeup products. I was like, well, what I can do is I can go buy something and then I can tell people whether it's good or not. So they can decide whether they want to spend their money on it or not. I don't think I said at the time to help each other not to buy crap, but that was basically why I wanted to start the channel. So I started off, let me see, how's my makeup doing? Okay, looks like we're doing all right. Okay, so I started buying makeup to review, but it was mostly drugstore stuff, things that I found on sale. I would go to discount stores and try to find things that I thought were popular and review them for the channel. I would buy things off of Hot Look, if you remember that site. It was, uh, eventually Nordstrom bought it, but it was a site where they had deep discounts on all kinds of things from fashion to makeup and everything, all the stuff. And I would get things off of there and then review it for the channel. So I started the channel in April, of 2012 and I went back to work in August of 2012. It was a new school and it was in a very different type of school. I went from working at what they call a Title I school. Um, the ma vast majority of kids who go there live below the poverty line. I was right next to the Baltimore City line. I taught there for 
five years, six years, something like that. And then now I was more in the suburbs. I was in a town called Catonsville, uh, not high income, middle, middle income people. So it was a huge change for me. One of the things that made it easier as a teacher was that the kids weren't coming to school with so many worries and troubles. Of course they had worries and troubles, but they weren't as severe or serious as the kids that were coming in from the low income school. So the kids in the middle income school, there were a, there was a lot less baggage there and they were more ready to learn in the classroom. So for me, it made my job a little bit easier to educate them because they were more ready to learn. And of course, this is of no fault to the kids in the other school. It was just a different change. It was just a different situation. And it happened to make my teaching job a little bit easier. So because of that, I did have some time to work on the YouTube channel and I was also getting a paycheck, which meant that I could spend money on makeup. But what I realized very quickly is that the makeup purchases were adding up. I was realizing I was spending 100 to $150 a month on makeup, which was a lot of money to spend 100 to $150 in makeup in order to review for the channel. And I'm not making money on YouTube at this point. I'm only making money from my job, but I loved it so much and I was having so much fun. I was even buying things for giveaways. Did I have money to buy things for giveaways? No, but I was loving it. I was loving it so much and I was so happy to have friends again, to have a workplace again, to have a job again, and my channel, I was having fun with it and it was just a really fun, joyous time. I had kind of been lifted out of my sadness. What I did to kind of curb my spending was to stop buying as many any brand new products from the store and start getting into subscription boxes. So I had a subscription to Ipsy, I had a subscription to something called Sample Society, and I had a subscription to something called Beauty Box Five. And I started reviewing the individual products from the subscription boxes instead of going out and buying full size products. And it saved me a lot of money. And that was how I became a subscription box review channel. And that was pretty much all I did for the next few years. Of course, I did review some other makeup, but I did a lot of subscription box unboxings. And this was also the first time I ever got PR. I got a free box from a company called Taste. And the idea behind Taste was you would get a box of food and it was little bits of food and it was supposed to be like a tasting experience. And you would try the different tastes and you would kind of develop opinions. And then at the end, you would open up this little clue card and it would tell you what everything was. So I did this unboxing with John and it was so fun. Hello. <laughs> Is this thing on? What? This is my husband, John. Hello. This Hi. is my wife, Jennifer. Hi. <coughs> Gonna hit ya. That was a good one, though. I would, I would want to buy that one. Well, this is gonna be a long video. This is the sandiest chocolate bar I've ever eaten. I don't even know if I want to finish this one. You want to finish mine? Mm -hmm. I need some water for that one. You want some water? It was so cute. Like I seriously, I loved doing YouTube. I couldn't wait to get home from my teaching job to film YouTube videos. And they weren't really taking me a ton of time to film these videos. I wasn't putting a ton of effort into them. I was mostly just turning on the camera and then I would kind of chop them up. Occasionally I would put, you know, an image of something in, but they really weren't taking me a ton of time. So I could also do all of my grading and my planning and all of that along with maintaining the YouTube channel. By the end of my first year, April to April, I had uploaded 84 videos. Guess how much money I had made at that point? Because at that point, YouTube didn't matter how much you made. If you made $2, they would give you $2. Like there was no threshold. Guess how much I made? That whole year, the whole first year, I made $57, but I thought that was a huge win. I was so freaking excited because that was an extra $52 in my pocket. And it was like, I can actually make money at this. This is so cool. I love it. I'm having fun and it's an, it's a creative outlet and I'm laughing and I've got subscribers and people are talking to me and we're having fun talking about makeup together. It was amazing. So I would, I literally was just so excited to get home, to get back into that YouTube life. I love teaching, but I really, really loved my free time doing YouTube. I'm such a social person. I need people in order to be happy. I'm just like that. So I was doing on YouTube a lot of challenges with other creators and tag videos and stuff like that. And I loved it. I loved getting to know other people in the community. Side note, just so you know kind of what my filming setup was at the time, I was living in a pretty small house. It was about 1,200, 1,300 square feet, one floor, but I would say a third of the house was the kitchen. The kitchen was really 
big, which was one of the reasons why I love the house, but it meant that the rest of the house was pretty small. Two bedrooms, one very, very tiny bathroom. But the thing about this house was it wasn't in a very good neighborhood. We had found out at one point that somebody across the street uh, was unregistered for things that we don't want someone unregistered for across the street from us. Uh, having little kids, absolutely terrifying. There were people walking down the street that made me nervous to have my kids playing in the front yard by themselves. They always had to be supervised when they were in the front yard. Uh, it was just not an ideal living situation. And as far as filming goes, I started off filming just sitting on my couch in the living room. And then we moved my filming setup to the corner of our very small bedroom. Like literally it was a bed, a dresser, another dresser, and there was a little bit tiny walkway between the bed and the dressers. And then in the corner, I had a little desk. And then I put my big, huge spotlight in front of the little desk. And that was my little corner where I filmed my YouTube videos. Very, very small setup. In May of 2013, I had my first quote unquote viral video. At least I felt like it was a viral video. And it was the stupidest video ever. It was so freaking stupid. So this was... <laughs> This was the thing, is that there were different videos that were going viral. And one of the ways in order to get your video seen was to parody those videos. So there was this lady that was doing this exercise thing called prancer size, right? <laughs> And she would dance with these weights on her. And I was like, well, what if I did the same thing, but I went outside and I prancer sized, but tried to put my makeup on at the same time while I did it. I was nervous to say prancer size because I didn't want her coming after me legally because I didn't know. Anyway, so I called it prancer exercise and I went out in my front yard and I prancer sized down my front walk. We have this beautiful front yard. Prancer sized down my front walk, putting on makeup. It was absolutely freaking ridiculous. There's a new exercise called prancer exercise and there's a little twist. Not only can you get your workout, but you can do your makeup at the same time. Prancer exercise. Prancer exercise. Prancer exercise. Prancing with our down boy clutch. The NYX Curve Eyeliner is ergonomically shaped for ease of application. And our Prancer exercise is completed. I hope you had fun getting beautiful and getting fit at the same time and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. And the video started getting views, way more views than I had ever gotten ever on, on either channel. And I was freaking out. And what really was the kicker on this is I made $300 off of that video and I lost my mind. I was so freaking out like because having just a random $300 come into my life like that I wasn't expecting literally had never happened to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is incredible. So after Prancer Size happened, I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I was like, there's certain YouTubers that get all of the attention that are the ones that are in the spotlight all the time. But there's so many of us that are just not getting any attention. So I'm going to bring a concept back. So on my old channel, I had something called Battle of the YouTube YouTube non-stars where I took other channels that I really liked that were about my size and we I kind of pitted them against each other in different challenges and it was so so fun so I decided to bring that on to the Jen Loves Reviews channel so I invited 12 creators that I was currently watching that I really enjoyed to come on and participate in challenges so every week there was some kind of challenge so it may have been you know the five minute makeup challenge or it was um, you know I don't remember what the other challenges were but there were different challenges that they had to do and my subscribers would would go over and watch different videos and then they would come back to my channel and they would vote for their favorite and it was a way to get views not only more views to my channel but views to everybody else's channels get everybody else more subscribers and kind of work together to just grow our channels the 12 13 of us I guess there were and there may be two people you recognize from this <laughs> channel and welcome to something very exciting. My name is Cassie, I run this channel and also I blog by the name of Thrift Day. The best in a beauty competition hosted by Jen Loves Reviews. Guess what guys, I am in a beauty competition on YouTube. 
welcome to the best in beauty competition hi guys how are you guys doing if you are new to my channel welcome to my channel and this is what I do best I know I do best is uh, makeup tutorials if you are new to my channel my name is Janelle um, I do beauty videos obviously and I really like to talk about each product and why I love it so much and the name of the competition or the contest is the best in beauty competition in thinking about what I wanted to do or what I do best I thought well what I do best is I'm myself I create videos that I really like and I'm just I'm not confined to one thing so I'm gonna be doing my top five six beauty products for the summer I do a lot of reviews, I do a review every single week, and they're usually my most watched videos. I'm assuming that what I do best is what I enjoy doing the most, which is talking about makeup products. When I first tried this, it was literally mind-blowing. Okay, it wasn't literally mind-blowing, because if my mind was actually blown, then, you know, I'd be dead. I decided that tutorials is what I think I do best. To prime my eyes, I'm using Max Letscape Paint Pot. It makes my eyes look like Edward Cullen, sparkly and pale. I decided on this DIY because I've been seeing tons of these in stores, and you can make them for close to nothing. She was mine. She was mine. Welcome to the wonderful world of Amelia. This video is my top bright lipsticks for summer. Well, I did this purple look and that's coming right up and you will see it next. The first person is somebody that still makes videos and got second place in our little competition and her name is Cassie and she runs a channel called Thrift Thick. So she did very, very well in the competition. The second person that you may recognize, her name is Janelle. And you may not recognize Janelle from the beauty space, but if you watch Kendall Ray, who does a lot of true crime, she has a podcast called The Sesh and her cousin's name is Janelle. And this is Janelle. Janelle was in my little beauty competition when she had a little beauty channel and that's how I kind of got connected to Janelle and Kendall and Ken Kendall and I still chat back and forth every once in a while because if you don't know if you follow Kendall and you don't know Kendall used to be pretty big in the beauty space. So back to what was happening on my channel. My channel was slowly growing. I hit 10,000 subscribers in 2014. Huge, huge, huge deal. So excited about that. My husband John and I started doing more videos together. We started unboxing clothing subscriptions together. We started doing his and hers birch box unboxings. I would bring the kids on to review, you know, little girl subscriptions for Phoenix and toy subscriptions with John. It was all about box unboxings for different reasons, mystery boxes and things. That was really big on YouTube just in general, but on my channel, it was all subscription boxes and it was fun. I really enjoyed that period of my channel. But I had an idea and the idea grew out of frustration. <laughs> And the frustration was, is that one of my favorite channels at the time was Emily Noel 83. And Emily seemed to know every single freaking makeup product that was launching. I'm like, how the hell does she know? How does she know what is coming out to say this? Like, I just didn't understand. I was like, what if there was a makeup news channel? What if there was somebody that did the research and found out what the makeup launches were so that I would know what to review, like what was coming out and what was hot and all of that? And I was like, nobody's going to do that. <laughs> So I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to make a makeup news show. So I had these core group of subscribers. You know, when, when you have a YouTube channel, you have those same people that you see over and over and over again. So Lily was one of my favorites. And Lil, I contacted Lily and I said, Lily, I have this idea. I said, do you want to be a part of this with me? Would you be a reporter for me and help me to research this? And she was like, yeah, totally. And then I contacted a few others of my subscribers, another woman named Susan, who I absolutely adored. I haven't 
haven't talked to her in years, but oh my gosh, Susan. And there were just, there were a few more that were my faves, you know, like my, my, my besties that would comment on my videos all the time. People that I thought might be interested in this. I contacted them and I said, hey, do you want to help me with this? And they all said yes. So each person had a job to research something. So maybe they would go over to Sephora's web. They would screenshot the picture for me. They would tell me how much it cost. They would copy and paste the description of the products and they were in charge of one little thing. So it would either be Sephora or Ulta, Ulta or Indie Brand News. Um, my friend Nicole was the reporter for Sales and Deals. I don't think she was part of the original crew, but she came on quite soon after that. And we developed this little news show. But where this really switched into a full-fledged news show was when a woman named Tabitha contacted me. And Tabitha contacted me and said, hey, you know, I'm on disability. I'm retired. I want something to do. Can I help you with anything? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So she became my production manager for many years and really kind of ran the crew. She's the one that organized all the information for me and into a script so that I could read it at the end of the week. And What's Up in Makeup started growing. My channel started growing. So once it grew to a certain point, then I started started paying Tabitha. I ended up giving out Christmas gifts to the reporters. It was, it was a whole thing. I ended up having about 13 people on the team organizing What's Up in Makeup for me. And that continued for a very long time. And you may not know this, another way that I got information is that I had a company reach out to me and offer to develop an app for me. There was a What's Up in Makeup app where people could share their makeup looks and also share new releases to be included in the show. And that was really fun until the people that made the app. They just didn't want to maintain it because I wasn't paying for it. They were basically just getting money off of the ads that they ran on the app. So I wasn't paying for it and they didn't want to do any tweaks to it. They didn't want to really work on it. They didn't want to make it better. Uh, so it ended up dying off and it was replaced with our Facebook group, the What's Up and Makeup Hunters group. So remember, during all of this, I am still working full time as a teacher. So I'm working all day until dinner time. I'm going to go pick up my kids from daycare. I'm driving home. I'm making dinner and then I'm working on my YouTube videos. I'm filming, I'm editing, I'm putting up one or two videos a week plus what's up in makeup on the weekends and our live chat. I forgot to look and see when I started live chat but I want to say it was around this time maybe even a little bit earlier. I started doing live chats every single Sunday and we still do those to this day. The hardest time though, the hardest time was 2014 when I was not only doing all of those things but I was also getting my master's degree. So there was a period of time when I really wasn't doing reviews. I was only keeping up with what's up in makeup because that was literally all I could do between all of the things. I would sit in the chair where I would edit and I would be so tired that my eyes would start closing as I was editing. So I would close my computer. I would set a timer for 30 minutes. I would take a power nap. The alarm would go off and then I would open my computer again to edit some more. And then I would go to work the next day. And that was just what, that was normal for me. I don't think I could do that now. <laughs> Yes, but that was normal. That was just my life. That was like, if I want to keep doing this, this is what I have to keep doing. And that's what I did. In 2015, we had a little bit of a turning point. I had been wanting to move for a while. Uh, I, I did not like our neighborhood. I didn't like that the kids couldn't go outside and play safely in our yard. I didn't like the house that we were living in. It was a good little house, but it was getting small. J4 was getting a little bit bigger. Um, Phoenix was getting a little bigger. And I knew we were going to outgrow this little house. And I've been telling my husband for like a year, I was like, I'd really like to move. But then something happened and it kind of pushed John over the edge. <laughs> Uh, two city rats got into our house uh, and it freaked him out really bad. And not long after that, we put our house on the market. We ended up moving to a house that we rented. It was about a thousand square foot bigger. It had a basement. It had an upper floor. It was in a much nicer neighborhood and a little cul-de-sac with lots of other kids where they could ride their bikes safely around the neighborhood and kind of have a little crew and go around the neighborhood. It was, it was wonderful. It was a lovely little suburban white picket fence little neighborhood. So we were much, much happier after we moved. But the problem was, is that because our house was in such a crappy neighborhood and because it was an older house and it was very small, it was very difficult to sell. So for a year and a half, we were paying both rent and a mortgage. We finally sold the house for about $50,000 less than what we had paid for it. And when the initial sale price was only like $200,000, that's a big cut um, we actually had to bring money to closing in order. It was like $10,000 we had to bring to closing to get rid of our house. <laughs> it was bad. It was very, very bad. 
Thank you to the crash of 2009. Appreciate you. That's what happened to us. So now 2015, we're living our best life in this beautiful neighborhood, in this beautiful house, and I'm working all day. I'm still doing YouTube at night, but the job changed a little bit. We got a new principal. The principal came on and had said, you know, we have an open door policy and, you know, anytime you have any problems, you can come to us. So we're all like, yeah, great. But what we didn't realize was that the door was open, but the ears were not open. <laughs> there was no listening and things really changed that year at the school um, with the new leadership and it was not going in a good direction at all. The stress went up significantly. The amount of work I needed to do for the job went up significantly. And the problem was, is it was work that I didn't believe in. It was work that I didn't think would actually help the students. All it did was complicate my life and make me do things in a way that I didn't even think was good. I already had the way that was working for the kids. The kids were making progress. The kids were happy. The parents were happy. Everybody is good. But now they're telling me to switch things up in a way that I didn't think was functional for kids. And I, I've told this a bunch of times, but I remember sitting with my students and I was sitting in a small group, special educator, and they looked at me and they said, Mrs. G, why are we doing this? And I said, sweetheart, I don't know. I don't know why we're doing this, but this is the thing. I was like, we're going to do this, do what we're supposed to do. And then we're going to do the things that we like doing that help us to really learn. Okay. Is that okay with you? And they're like, yeah, sure. So that's what we, what I did for that year is I got through the things that I needed to do. And then I taught the way that I wanted to teach after that. But what the result of that was, was double of the work because I had to plan what they wanted me to do. But then I also had to plan the extra things that I knew in order to help the kids to learn. Because I knew if I just did what they told me to do, the kids wouldn't learn. And I felt like that was a neglect on my part if I didn't take that extra step. So I was drowning is what it comes down to. I was drowning in the job and it was, and then I was trying to do YouTube at the same time. And I went to my husband and I was crying and I was just like, this job is so hard. And he looked at me and he said, you know, you don't have to teach if you don't want to. And this is like November. You don't have to teach if you don't want to. I was like, what do you mean I have to teach? He's like, if you want to do YouTube and just do YouTube, you can do that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Keep in mind, in that year, I made $6,000 in a full year, making hundreds of videos, $6,000. That is not going to be enough to be the same as a teacher salary. Plus, I was going to be losing my very, very good insurance that the whole family was on. So this financially was an extremely stupid move. <laughs> <laughs> to quit teaching and then do YouTube full time at this point. But John knew my passion for doing YouTube. He knew how much I loved it and he knew how much the teaching job was killing me. So in January, I put in my letter of intent that I did not intend to return and I put the check mark that they tell you never to put which is dissatisfied with position. Because if you check dissatisfied with position, everybody knows you are never gonna work in that county ever again. Because when they pull up your file, you're gonna be seen as a troublemaker, somebody that is going to be difficult to work with, somebody that they don't wanna hire. So I basically made that decision by checking that box that I would never go back to Baltimore County Public Schools ever again. And I'm so glad that I did that. I am so glad and I'm so thankful to John that he pushed me to do that and took that risk on me because it was a huge risk. I mean, he was doing well for himself. He owned a tattoo studio. The tattoo studio was doing extremely well. Um, we weren't rich by any means, but he could carry us and our bills. Even if I was only making $6,000 a year, he was doing well enough that we would be okay, but not for the long term. It had to become profitable in order for me to stay out of teaching. So there was a lot of pressure to produce incredible content, grow my channel, and grow the money that I was making. But what quitting teaching did for me was it freed up so much of my time and it allowed me to dig deeper into my product reviews. It allowed me to start researching ingredients and seeing how different ingredients impacted formula. It allowed me to do very in-depth reviews of products and comparisons, swatch comparisons of my entire collect. Like, all of the things that I always wanted to do but never had the time to do, I could now do. And I was in heaven. Y'all know, if you've even been on this channel for a couple of days, you probably have figured out how much I love to research. That's when I got to research and I 
freaking loved it. I was so excited for it. I, I filled up the time. All of the time that I was spending teaching, I filled up that time researching and putting my heart and soul into providing extremely detailed educational makeup reviews. What's Up in Makeup also added the top news segment, which was really wonderful. I freaking loved the top news segment. I love talking about not just what were the products that were coming out, but what was happening in the industry. That brought me so so much joy. In late 2016, I think it was my idea, but it might have been Tabitha's idea to start the Makeup Minute. So the Makeup Minute was a one minute segment, which would be perfect now for, <laughs> would be perfect now for TikTok or, you know, YouTube shorts or whatever, but I don't know if I'll ever bring it back. Honestly, I don't know. But the Makeup Minute was one minute of things that just didn't fit into the regular news show or things that were happening right now that I needed to tell you about. So I was putting out Five makeup minutes, Monday through Friday. I was doing What's Up in Makeup on Sunday. I was doing a live chat on Sunday. And I was also putting out three makeup reviews every single week. So 10 videos every single week, counting those one minute makeup minutes that Tabitha would write for me and I would then record. She would write it for me. She would give me the pictures. I would record it. I would edit it and I would put it up. So the whole process only took me personally about 45 minutes to an hour to produce every day. Over the next few years, my channel didn't really change a ton except for that I cut back on the number of subscription boxes and I went heavier into makeup reviews. But one thing that I did do, which was freaking amazing, was I flew out, uh, I contacted Emily Noel 83 and I flew out to meet her and film with her. And it was incredible. I wanna take a selfie real quick. Okay. okay. <laughs> now I, oh, that's your phone, that's not even mine. <laughs> Phone. And it's 10 o'clock, we have plenty of time. Okay, all right, ready for selfie? I'm gonna scooch in okay. just a little bit here. All right, so. Okay, and I'll post it up later. All right. You know, they say never meet your heroes, but uh, that was not that was not the experience I had with meeting Emily. She was lovely and amazing. We went out uh, for barbecue, I think we had, for dinner the night before we filmed. Uh, we drank a beer together. Like, what? Can you even imagine Emily drinking beer? I don't know. If you know Emily, I, like, we drank a beer together. And we, uh, we ate food. And then the next day, we filmed a couple videos together. And I was seriously fangirling the entire time. Like, this, Emily was the reason why What's Up in Makeup had started and I was now filming with her and it was an absolute dream come true. Doing that collab with her and then also I had done one with a YouTuber named Stephanie Nicole who was amazing. I don't know where Stephanie is now but wherever she is I hope that she is thriving and living her best life. She was really big on the channel so even before I collabed with Emily I flew out and saw Stephanie Nicole and collabed with her so this kind of got me this bug of that I wanted to travel and I wanted to collaborate with different YouTubers so my family did this big road trip and on that road trip I got to collaborate with some amazing people so I got to collaborate with uh, Bailey Sarian who was relatively unknown at the time she was working for Ipsy uh, she had a you know maybe 30 35,000 subscribers something like that so she had a decent sized channel but I was definitely the bigger channel at the time and you know Bailey Sarian I don't even know how many subscribers mill millions and millions and millions of subscribers now she's amazing she always should have been there I don't know why at any point I had more subscribers than her to be 100% with you so I got to collaborate with Bailey I got to do a video with my friend Nicole from Yay Renee Nicole. I got to do a video with Risa from Risa Does Makeup, who is thriving in the beauty space now. And I got to meet another hero of mine. I got to meet Leisha from X Sparkage, who was one of my original inspirations for this channel. So, and that was wonderful too. And like the whole never meet your heroes thing just did not apply to any of these situations. Everybody was absolutely lovely and fantastic. So in 2018, six years after I started my channel, Almost very closely to the same month, I hit 100,000 subscribers and got my YouTube play button. Every now and then I get a little bit terrified and then I see the look in your eyes. Bright eyes. And the very last thing I wanted to save for the end because this is... This is you. This is this is me and you together because without you, I wouldn't have this. This well, without you, I wouldn't have any of this. But this one specifically is about you. This is my 100,000 subscriber play button. I didn't know if it was gonna cry or not, but 
I know it seems so stupid, but thank you. I didn't feel like I'm accepting an award. <laughs> you know, I didn't get an Oscar, you know, like it's kind of dumb, but you know, I've been on YouTube since 2006 and um, I took a little bit of a break and then Jen Lowe's reviews started after that, but it's just, it's something I've been working for for a long time. And to me, this just says that I'm doing something right, that you like what I'm doing and that I should keep doing it. That's what this says to me. It's not about the specific number. It's just that this is, this is just kind of a symbol of that, that I'm doing something good here. And I wanna thank you so much for subscribing and for watching my videos because it means a lot to me. And I'm not gonna go on and on and on, but um, just thank you for being here. And thank you for helping me to build this channel and for making this a special place because without you, this isn't a community and this isn't worth doing without you. So thank you. And that was a huge deal because that was really the only thing I ever really wanted was hitting 100,000 subscribers. Everything after 100,000 subscribers is bonus. And I do still feel that way. In May of 2019, I ended up killing the makeup minute because it just wasn't getting the same views as my other content and I had this thing in my head that if some of my videos were getting significantly less views that YouTube was going to drag me down in the algorithm. I did find that later that I don't know if that was actually true but at the time I really believed it so I killed the makeup minute. I remember Tabitha was really upset and I was really upset but it was also a big weight off of my shoulders to not have to produce this video five days a week and trying to figure out what to put in it because there wasn't always something to say. Sometimes the things just weren't exciting and it just felt like a waste of time to to force myself to push out this video when it really didn't have anything great in it. So I killed the makeup minute. The next big change was in October of 2020 and that was when I decided I wanted to change the format of what's up in makeup and that was a really hard decision. I'd been thinking about it for a while that I felt like the way that what's up in makeup had been set up where it was real newsy. I had a you know the background and I put the things next to me and it was presented as a news show. It just felt, it started to feel kind of cold. It started to feel impersonal. Um, the reading of the script directly just didn't, I didn't vibe with it anymore and it just wasn't feeling good. And also the What's Up and Makeup views were going down. People were getting tired of the format, I think. Um, just that it felt very robotic almost. It, it, it wasn't personal. So this was really hard because what I had decided to do was I wanted to do the What's Up and Makeup stuff on my own uh, because I couldn't figure out a way to use the team the way that I had been using them because part of doing a more personal version of What's Up and Makeup was me knowing everything ahead of time that was going to be in the script, not just reading it one time through. Sometimes I didn't even know what the pictures looked like when I was saying, you know, what the products were. I needed to be more personally involved in the content in order for it to be a more personal video. So it was really hard to let Tabitha know, let the rest of the team know that I was changing up the format. Um, I cried. I, I felt terrible about it. That's why it took me so long to stop doing that format because I was so scared of hurting people's feelings and there were feelings hurt. And I still feel terrible that feelings were hurt on that because we all put so much heart into it and we put so much of our time and energy. And I just don't, I, I don't think that it's a viable format anymore and it breaks my heart because this has been my baby for a long time and I really wanted this to work and it's not and it's very upsetting for me so um it's taken me a while to make the decision to stop doing what's been makeup in its current form um I hate, it. I hate the idea I'm terrified to stop doing it um I feel like I might be making the wrong choice. I don't know whether this is the right choice or not, but it feels right. It feels right to just cut and just, just try to do something different. Um, so um, what does that mean in the big picture? Um, it means a lot of things. It means that a lot of things are gonna be changing on my channel. Um, so this weekend is gonna be the last episode of What's Been Make Up the Way That It Is. And it breaks my heart. Um, but I want to make sure I stress that, that you guys did absolutely nothing wrong. And you're amazing. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my soul. And I don't know how to express it any more than just to say I appreciate you. Um, so this week is going to be the last week of what's going to make up the way that it is. So these will be your last reports that you'll turn in.
but they did have the opportunity to then join the What's Up and Make Up Hunters Facebook group and contribute that way. And some of them did, which I'm very, very thankful for the ones that did. Uh, unfortunately, Tabitha and I stopped being friends at that point. She was really upset about my decision and we stopped being friends and lost contact after that which still hurts my soul. It still does because she was my friend and I really wanted her to continue being a part of my life and it just didn't work out that way, unfortunately. So because I no longer had a team, I now had all of that research that 13 people were doing for me. I was now doing it on my own, which was a lot of work and I knew it was gonna be a lot of work, but I was okay with that because I was really excited about the new format of just sitting here at the desk and talking to you about makeup news and that way too, like let's say somebody spent, you know, an hour writing a story and then it gets to me and I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is just not interesting. It's not a story that I think is going to resonate. What am I going to do? Tell them I'm not going to do the story even though you spent an hour on it. I felt obligated at the time to do everything that they were submitting because I know that they knew that they had worked hard on it. Now that was off the table because I was personally choosing what was going to be in the show. In hindsight, I probably should have chosen the stories first and then given that to the reporters, but you know how hindsight is, it's 2020. So the most recent change you may have been here for, which was the separation of the product report and the top news segment of What's Up In Makeup that we just started in January, where now we have just one video dedicated to top news, one video dedicated to the rest of the show, the product report, PR purchase product of the week, the sales and deals, all of that. And I personally really freaking love that because I get to delve more into the research. I get to tell you more stories. I get to tell you about more products. I get to tell you about the things that I just did didn't have time to tell you about before because I had to get everything done by Saturday night because it went live on Sunday. Now I have a whole extra day where I can finish up editing the product report and get that to you on Monday. So it gives me a little bit of extra time so that I can really fill both of those shows with everything that I think that I want you to know about, which I love. So now we are to today, we're to now. 2024. I have hit 300,000 subscribers. This really does mean so much to me. It's really cool to meet this milestone. And in this time, I do want to let you know that kind of like where I want the channel to go right now from here. And there's a couple of things driving this. And I know that some of you are not happy about my lack of doing as many in-depth reviews like I used to. Because remember, I, I told you, I, like I used to just dig deep into these reviews and ingredients and all that. And a lot of you subscribe during that period of time. But this is what it comes down to, my friend. It comes down to the fact, a couple of things. First, I have I have a lot of stuff. And I have like probably 40 different foundations. It is not in my heart to go out and buy another foundation right now. Like I don't, I don't want another foundation. <laughs> I just don't want to. I don't I don't want to buy more product. I have so much product, I don't want more. So if I can avoid buying more stuff, I would love that. It's just too much. It's too much stuff and it's just not in my heart to do that, to keep purchasing and purchasing and purchasing and decluttering and purchasing and decluttering and purchasing. So that's one thing. And the other thing that kind of pairs very well with that is that there are thousands of YouTube channels that do a fantastic job with reviews that are posting right now. They are doing these reviews right now and doing an amazing job at it. When I started in 2012, there wasn't a lot of people doing makeup reviews. There were some people, but not a ton not a ton of people. So I could stand out in that way. I could, I, I didn't have a lot of product and I was learning. We were learning together and I enjoyed that journey. But I do feel like, you know, the way that, that life is, is that you kind of do a growth period and then you're replaced by other people that are doing that. So there, there are people that are just getting into their makeup journey that are enjoying it the way that I was in 2012 to 2017, 2018. There are people that are just starting that now that I want them to be the ones doing the reviews now because they have the Passion. They have the desire. They have the enjoyment. It is fresh and new for them. And you see it coming through in their eyes and in their reviews. And also the people that have been around forever doing reviews that are still loving it and still enjoying it. I really want them to be the ones shining in that area because I have other interests now. And my interest still is very much in research and very much in education. I just don't want it to be about the foundation of the blush anymore. I want it to be about what's happening in the industry. I want it to be through telling a story of something that happened in the past through behind the controversy and kind of analyzing it in a hindsight perspective. Like that's where I'm finding my joy now. I am really enjoying it. And I totally understand if you are not finding as much joy in that as I am and you're much preferring the makeup reviews, the in-depth makeup reviews. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link some amazing YouTube channels down below 
know that if you really want those fantastic reviews, I'm going to link some of my favorite people, friends of mine, down in the description that you can go over and watch and they will take care of you. I highly recommend those channels. And this is not to say that I'm not doing any more makeup reviews because I absolutely will. Like for example, I just did that one on Rare Beauty with the skincare line. Freaking love doing that video. There's still going to be the occasional reviews on the channel. I'm also still going to do PR purchase product of the week where I'm going to show you something that I'm trying right now and giving you reviews in What's Up in Makeup. So I'm not going to stop doing makeup reviews, but it's just my heart just isn't as there anymore as it used to be. And I'm just, I'm just pivoting. I'm growing with the channel and I'm hoping you're growing with me and that you're enjoying it. Or if you're just finding me now through this type of content, I hope you're ready to go on this journey with me because I'm ready to take you. I have so many stories to tell and so many things I want to share with you. And I'm just happy that you're here. That's what it comes down to. I'm just thankful and I'm happy that you're here and I'm not going anywhere. There's just so much more to come. And that's the difference between a YouTube channel and a television show is that television, you know, is scripted. The, the people know where it's going. But with YouTube, we're dealing with real people, real human beings that change and grow over time. And I know you've changed and grown since 2012. What were you doing in 2012? <laughs> I know you've changed and grown since then and so have I. And, you know, sometimes people grow together and sometimes they grow apart and that's okay. But no matter where you are, just know that I respect you and I Thank you for any amount of time that you've spent on this channel. I just, I genuinely appreciate it. Like I was saying in the intro, I know you can spend your time doing so many things and you've chosen to be here. And and I don't take that lightly at all. And I want to thank you for that. And with that being said, I've, that's the story of Jen Lowe's reviews. <laughs> That's what happened. That's the story. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you're new here, I hope you loved hearing about the past of the channel. And if you've been here for a while, I hope you had fun going down memory lane with me. And if you would like to hang out a little longer and watch a video, YouTube's going to recommend a couple of them over here for you to watch. Uh, I'm going to pick that one down there for you. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there yet, but I'm going to put something cool for you. YouTube's going to pick the top one based on what you've been watching recently, what they think you're going to like. But if you do have to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did and hearing me yap on about the channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.